If you're in the process of trying to upgrade from SAP ECC to SAP S4 HANA, you may be wondering how exactly do I go about that process? That's exactly what I wanna talk about here in today's video. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And many organizations today are looking at the sunsetting of SAP ECC in 2027 as a deadline of sorts to get off of ECC. And in most cases, a lot of those ECC customers are moving to S4 or HANA. In fact, most organizations we work with that were using SAP ECC are naturally upgrading to S4 or HANA. But since moving from ECC to S4 or HANA isn't as simple as a lift and shift, it's actually a more material upgrade or re-implementation of technology. You may be wondering how exactly do I get started on the journey? What should I expect? What should I do to start that process? And that's exactly what I wanna cover here today. First, it helps to back up and define and validate whether or not S4 HANA really is the best fit for your organization. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that most organizations we work with that are on CCC and going to an upgrade are in fact going to S4 HANA, but not all of them are. Some find that there's a better solution out there in the marketplace than S4 HANA. And the key reason why this is so important in a consideration that you should think about is because S4 HANA is a completely different product than ECC. ECC has the benefit of years of R&D and decades of R&D investments in their on-premise solution, whereas S4 HANA is a cloud solution on a new HANA platform built for the cloud. Now, most organizations, again, find that that's a positive thing and they find that those capabilities are consistent with where they're headed as an organization, but it does make sense oftentimes to just validate and make sure that S4 HANA is the best fit for you, or at least compare S4 HANA to other options in the marketplace, especially because technology is changing so quickly and there's a lot of great ERP solutions out there. Now, assuming that you do decide S4 HANA is the right fit for you and that's the direction you're going to go, now it's important to really understand where the gaps are, not just in the core S4 HANA product, but also some of the edge applications like business objects and success factors, concur, et cetera. So when you look at the whole stack of SAP products, you want to make sure you understand the complete ecosystem that they're providing. And more importantly, you want to understand where the gaps are. And this gap analysis isn't necessarily to try changing your mind or to create doubt as to whether or not S4 or HANA is the right fit for you, but instead it's meant to identify where the risks are within the implementation and what you're gonna to do to mitigate those risks. So for example, if you find material gaps in what S4 HANA cannot do, you wanna know how you're gonna address that gap. Are you gonna customize S4 HANA? Are you gonna plug in a third party solution? Are you gonna plug in another SAP solution to fill that void? You really want to have a clear vision and understanding of where those gaps are so that you have a realistic understanding of what the implementation is going to look like, what the risks are, what the costs are going to look like, all that good stuff. Because we're human, we all have a tendency to jump in and just start building stuff when we're deploying technologies. It's a natural tendency, but it's a very ineffective tendency. In other words, instead of just jumping in and starting to design and build S4 HANA, Organizations that are more successful take the time to blueprint their organization, define the way things are today, and more importantly, how they're gonna change or how they want to change their processes going forward. Now, I'm not suggesting that you get down into every transactional workflow, every screen, every button that gets pushed along the way, but I am suggesting that you wanna make sure that you've identified where you wanna change your processes at a high level so that you can give your system integrator within SAP better direction and better requirements on how they're gonna deploy S4 HANA. What happens if we don't do that upfront is that the technical implementers will oftentimes be waiting while they're billing by the hour for you to decide what it is you wanna be when you grow up and what you want your processes to look like. So the more of that legwork you can do upfront to use that as a blueprint and a sort of architecture for how S4 HANA is gonna be deployed, the more time and money and risk you're gonna save later on in the project. Before you embark on your S4 HANA implementation in earnest, you also wanna make sure you take the time to define a clear and effective change strategy and plan. 
In other words, we need to understand how this S4 HANA project and this S4 HANA technology stack is going to impact our organization and what we're going to do to manage that change, to change people's processes, their roles and responsibilities, and other aspects of change management. So we need to make sure we have a clear and realistic understanding of what our change strategy and change plan is, because that change plan needs to become an input into and part of the overall implementation plan. And if we don't have that input into the overall implementation plan, then we're essentially just guessing as to how long the project's gonna take and how big of a change it's gonna be to the organization. So organizations that are most successful take the time to slow down up front, to do that organizational assessment, understand where the change impacts are, and to create a change strategy and plan that fits their unique situation. Now we've talked about how to define a blueprint for your business processes and how to define a clear change management plan, but we also have to define the architecture for the solution going forward. The good news, bad news about SAP is that they've grown their technology stack largely by acquiring other companies over the years. They acquired success factors, they acquired Concur and other solutions that help them complete the overall technology solution that they provide. And even with these acquisitions, many of our clients find that SAP as a vendor isn't able to provide everything they need. There might be some third party non SAP types of products and tools that need to be integrated into the overall SAP solution to provide a complete transformation that they're looking for. So we need to have that clarity and visibility before we define our implementation plan. And only by creating that clarity and visibility on the technology and architecture side, can we really understand what the implementation is gonna look like as well as what the risks are going to be. Once you've defined the future state, you've identified how the organizational change strategy is going to fit into the overall project, now you can start to build the overall implementation plan. And the reason this is so important, even though it sounds very simple, is because a lot of organizations just take the proposals given to them by SAP or the SAP system integrator, they take that at face value and assume that that is the implementation plan. And the problem with that approach is multifold. First of all, those implementation plans and proposals are oftentimes incomplete. They usually don't include the non-technical aspects of the business transformation, things like change management, things like how we're gonna improve the processes, how we're gonna to tie together multiple systems, what the architecture is gonna look like, how we're gonna migrate data. All that stuff is really important to have as inputs into the overall implementation plan. So the best way to think about this is to think of your SAP project plan as one input, one work stream into an overall program. And now we need to define what the overall program plan looks like in terms of the other work streams that your system integrator is not providing. Only by doing this can we have a realistic plan that gives us a better shot at finishing the project on time and on budget. Now that we've defined a realistic implementation plan that pulls together all these different work streams that I've talked about so far in this video, we're not quite ready to start yet, but we're almost there. Now we need to create a value realization plan. How are we gonna get value out of this S4 HANA implementation? Now we work with some pretty large organizations that are spending tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars on their SAP S4 HANA implementations. That in and of itself is not a bad thing if you can justify it with business value. Unfortunately, too many organizations today think they have to invest that kind of money in S4 HANA because SAP is essentially forcing them to by discontinuing support for ECC come 2027. That's a terrible reason or a terrible justification to go forward with an S4 HANA implementation. So in order to make sure that we get value out of these millions of dollars that we're going to spend on our S4 HANA implementation, we need to make sure we have a clear plan for how we're going to realize business value. Where are we going to reduce inventory? Where are we going to cut those SG&A costs? How are we going to increase top line revenue growth? And SAP and system integrators are really good at sharing benchmarks, trying to prove to you that their software can deliver that value but they're not as good at showing you how to realize that value. So it's really important that you have that value realization plan in place so that you can justify the investments you're about to make, but also to provide you the parameters and the decision-making capabilities during the implementation so that any requests for changes to scope or additional customization or additional modules can be decided in the context of whether or not it supports the overall value creation we're looking for. If it delivers value in our business case, then great, maybe we invest in it. And if it doesn't, then maybe we shouldn't invest in it. 
And the good news in all of this is if you find areas of S4 HANA that just simply aren't worth the risk or the upside ROI potential, you can always stick with ECC for part of your business. Doesn't mean it's gonna be supported forever. Even after 2027, there's still some limited support that will maybe keep the lights on, or that may be a good opportunity to go find a lower cost, lower risk and higher ROI type of bolt-on that helps fill whatever void S4 HANA might have in certain parts of your business. So just know that even though SAP and its system integration partners may not tell you this, there are other options than just biting off the entire S4 HANA solution and doing that all at once. There's other lower risk, higher value ways that you can do that. But in order to understand and make the right decision, you need to have a clear value realization plan. So I hope this has provided some general tips and pointers for how to get started on your journey from ECC to S4 HANA. I also wanted to invite you to download our guide to successful S4 HANA implementation, which is based on our years of experience helping clients implement S4 HANA. It's a technology agnostic report and set of best practices. So there's no sugarcoating the realities of S4 HANA implementations. Because we're a technology agnostic firm, we're able to provide the realistic view of what it's gonna to take to make your project successful. So I encourage you to download that guide below. I also encourage you to check out some of the other resources I've included that will help you in your S4 HANA transformation journey. You can find those in the description field as well. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. How is it that we're gonna get value out of this HES4? <laughs> wow, HES4? That does not make sense. Now we work with some pretty big organizations that are implementing tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars, let me say that again, on their SAP S4 on a, oh, yeah. wow.